Hello and welcome to The Telescope. Every week we bring you a fresh insight from the biggest car market in the world. The Tesla Model Y was, and in many people's minds still is, the world's best electric vehicle. It's the gold standard in electric SUVs energy consumption. Its founder Elon Musk is the richest man in the world, designs rockets that land themselves, and is planning to go to Mars. But this car has been in production since January 2020. That's four and a half years ago. In the fast evolving world of electric vehicles, that's a very long time. Surely something can beat it. Especially in China, where companies like Xiaomi has demonstrated, it is possible to start an EV company from scratch and deliver cars to customers' hands in just 1,000 days. As is the case in any industry or even just sport, once a breakaway leader has been established, others will try to work out what makes them so great, gradually learn from it, and even tries to overtake it. Today, we have a serious contender. That is the Envo L60. We're gonna compare them back to back to see if the Model Y has been caught or not. We start the test with the only test that really matters. Is the Envo L60 more energy efficient than the Tesla Model Y? If you believe the official homologation figure from Envo, then it is more efficient than the Model Y because this Envo L60 rear wheel drive 60 kilowatt hour battery on the 19 inch wheel in the CLTC cycle measures at 12.1 kilowatt hour per 100 kilometer. The Tesla Model Y rear wheel drive also on the 60 kilowatt hour battery on the 19 inch wheel in the CLTC cycle measures at 12.5 kilowatt hour per 100 kilometer. Then why are we doing this test? It's not that I'm suspecting there's any cheating going on. It's just that CLTC is a very um, unrepresentative test cycle. This is CLTC, the hardest acceleration from 60 to 100 kph, that's 40 miles an hour to 62 miles an hour, takes 20 seconds. I don't know anyone who drives like that. Even my mom drives faster than that. I know it is the same for every car, so at least it's fair, but CLTC is just very, um, what's the word I'm looking for without offending the officials? Gentle. So what is realistic? I know different people drive very differently. What's realistic for me may not necessarily be realistic for you. I've sampled from 20 or so colleagues, their average speed varies from 30 kph to around 45 kph. And because factor in, we are living in a very congested city that is Shanghai, you may suffer less congestion than we do. So we want the average speed to be around 40 kph. And we also included the worst road in Shanghai. That's not just my word, it's been voted on by nearly 5,000 people. So it should be a great test of the ride quality. Okay, we reset. Three, two, one. Okay, now we're ready. Yes, China in general has amazing infrastructure, but not when you're building them. This road, as you can see, is under a lot of construction. This elevated road currently is being built and it doesn't even make sense to fix this road right now because the amount of heavy duty construction tracks running on this every day, if you fix it now, it will immediately get wrecked again on the same day. The officials say when this elevator road gets finished, they will fix this road. So while it's bad for people living in this area, it's a godsend for car reviewers like me because if you want a reason of why Chinese cars are generally set up towards comfort, this is why. Dynamically, the Envo L60 is a more relaxed car with a slower steering rack and also a more um, softer suspension. So if you are a keen driver who wants driving dynamics regardless of ride comfort, then the Model Y still is the better car to drive. But let's rewind to the pre-Tesla world. I still remember the first time I drove a Model 3. I was shocked by first, how fast the steering was. Second, how hard the chassis was. And you have to remember at that time, I was daily driving a Jaguar F-Type, which is a two-seater sports car. 
The facelifted Model 3 has a much more relaxed chassis and I fully expect the Model Y facelift to move in the same direction as the Model 3 facelift, that is, move closer to this car. 我们尝试这一段结束了，那个特斯拉报一下你现在是多少？乐道是十二点零。特斯拉这边是十三点零。So at urban speed, forty kph average speed, the Envo L60 beats the Model Y hands down. And to be honest, that's kind of expected for two reasons. Firstly, this Envo L60 is on lower rolling resistance tire than the Model Y, which at low speed accounts for the majority of the resistance. At that kind of speed, um, aerodynamics doesn't really come into it. Second reason is this Envo L60, unlike Tesla, has braking through regen. That is, the brake pedal will always prioritize regen when you touch the brake pedal. The Tesla is on a fixed amount of regen, so every time at the urban city speed, if you are touching the brake pedal on the Tesla, then you are basically pumping kinetic energy into the brakes and waste it as heat. That hurts the Model Y at urban speeds. Well, you could say you should always anticipate a distance and correctly judge it and use the one pedal region as much as possible. But at urban speeds, it's always difficult to judge. You never know, sometimes that emergency stop just comes out of nowhere and on the Tesla you're wasting energy. So that is the low speed taken care of. But we are also going to have a very representative high speed section. China's highway speed limit is 120 kph. So we've specially selected a stretch of 120 kph, nearly empty, straight piece of highway. And we are going to reset the trip computer after we go past the tow station. So this is as high speed as we can get around Shanghai. Let's see how these cars get on. 在前方汇入主路之后，这一个四个车道都有限速标牌的这个位置，重置小吉利车，好吧？ Okay, the Tesla has been averaging 14.4. I took 20, 21 minutes, they're traveling 37 kilometers. So, as the highway section finishes, we're going to take the measurements on the screen. That is the Tesla at 14.4 kilowatt hour per 100 kilometer, just beats the Envo L60 at 14.5. So unless you drive almost exclusively on the highway, then the Envo is the more efficient electric vehicle. We can see the Model Y comparatively gets more efficient as the speed builds up. That, in my opinion, is partially down to the difference between the CLTC and the American EPA cycle. The Envo L60 is primarily designed for China, so it's only natural that it optimizes for the more low speed biased Chinese CLTC cycle. This Model Y is primarily designed for the US market, so it's only natural that it optimizes for the more high speed biased American EPA cycle. Hence, this car has more of a focus on high speed efficiency. And the Model Y also has a slight advantage on frontal area. I know we're splitting hairs, but when the difference is so small, every bit of difference matters. It doesn't look like it on paper because these two cars on the maximum dimensions are very close. But if we use the same camera at the same focal lens, take pictures from the same distance at the same angle and overlay the two pictures on top of each other, you can see the Tesla Model Y's upper body or the so-called glass house area shrinks a lot more aggressively compared to the Envo. And that gives it a smaller frontal area and this advantage will only get bigger when the speed builds up. And as the cabin shrinks even more on the second row horizontally, this Model Y does feel more cramped 
than the Envo L60, especially on the second row. And that, I think, is just what the two different market needs. I've explained in my Volkswagen Tiguan L Pro video why the Chinese consumers care a lot about rear cabin space. So the Envo L60 decides to have a bigger cabin and because the CLTC cycle predominantly focus on the low speed, take a bit of hit on the high speed efficiency is well worth it. And let's be perfectly honest, that tiny bit of energy consumption disadvantage compared to the Model Y is going to be more than offset when you consider this can battery swap. Now I'm at a Gen 3 station, this is not the fastest Gen 4 station, so it's not going to be two and a half minutes, maybe three or four minutes but still it's going to be way faster than the model y the model y is parking at the 500 kilowatts liquid cooled ultra fast chargers which is an overkill for model y which peaks at roughly 160 kilowatts i'm going to start swapping at the same time he starts charging and by the time i finish with a full charge let's see how much energy the tesla has put in okay ding lao shi ni xian zai shi bai fen zhi duo shao de soc Okay, we're now at 3, 2, 1, start. Okay, I have finished. And the cameraman, please go to the Tesla and see how much power has he put in. This is probably the slowest Envo battery swap you will ever see because at the time, this was the first few Envo battery swap at this particular Gen 3 station. Gen 3 station needs some adaptation to be compatible with Envo battery packs. With a fully running Gen 3 station, a swap should be around four minutes. And as you have seen, a swap in Gen 4 station could be around two and a half minutes. So. This is sort of the worst case scenario. It could be even faster than this. Another area where I expect the Model Y facelift to vastly improve is the MVH. Back in the day when the Tesla Model 3 first switched from single layer glass to double layer acoustic glass, a noise engineer from a certain manufacturer got hold of a new Model 3 and was trying to see how big of an improvement a double layer acoustic glass can bring. The answer, it was nothing. It was within margin of error because Tesla's problem was not the thickness of the glass. It's the seal. There was a leakage on the front door. You know how noise engineers always have a bit of tape with them. When he taped the leakage, the improvement on MVH was so much bigger than what the acoustic glass brings. And that has been my biggest problem with Tesla. It is amazingly efficient. The Envo L60, four and a half years later, only barely edges it out. But it is also poorly made, in the most traditional sense of the word. Panel gaps, paint quality, interior fit and finish, perceived quality, noise performance, those are all the things Tesla has nothing to write home about. Which is why I always disagree when Tesla is considered as a luxury brand. No, it's not. It's a Honda with great tech. I'm not saying this Envo is the best car that has ever been made, but this is a Chinese made car. We are very good at taking standardized tests. Anything that is easy to measure, easy to judge what's good and bad, we will eventually be very good at those things. This Envo has the right level of material, fit and finish, noise performance of a car at this price range. This has an HUD with speed, assisted driving and navigation, graphic navigation info straight at your line of sight, which is so much safer than the Model Y. And don't talk to me about first principle that one central screen is enough. It's not that difficult to see the speed info at the top left corner of the screen. If that is the case, why does the Model S and X has instrument display? Just face up to it. It's cost cutting, plain and simple. The front seats has heating and ventilation as standard, which I fully expect the facelift Model Y to follow. But even the facelift Model Y will not have this lower leg support. And the facelift Model Y will not have adjustable back seat. This back seat is so much bigger than the Model Y, which let's be honest, is not that small to begin with. But the problem with the back seat of the Model Y is the seat back is quite upright. This 
you can just lean back and relax. On the boot, Tesla still wins, partially because it used to have a seven seat variant. This is a 495 liter boot and with a very significant underfloor storage. And Envo has partnered with Media to produce a fridge that fits perfectly in this underfloor compartment. The Envo L60 can also drive itself in urban conditions. I know Tesla can do that in North America, but it cannot do it here. And the Navigate on Pilot, even on the highway, is still fairly restrictive, is not as good as the Envo. I know that's mainly a regulatory thing, but the fact is, if you pay the money now, you get urban assisted driving in the Envo and you don't in the Tesla. And judging by the reason hawkish tone from US towards Chinese smart electric vehicles, I'm not expecting FSD to get the clearance anytime soon. Let's move on to Tesla's strength. Otherwise, this video is going to look like a landslide victory for the Envo. I think it's only fair to recognize that after four and a half years of extra time and a 900 volt architecture versus 400 volt for the Tesla, the Envo L60 only beats Model Y by such small margins on efficiency. And as I pointed out, the deficiency of the Model Y at low speed is mainly due to the lack of CRBS that is breaking through regen. If Model Y fit CRBS to itself, which it won't because on a facelifted Model 3, it still doesn't have it. But let's just imagine Model Y gets CRBS. Then it's really anyone's guess between the efficiency of this and the Model Y. And that's quite incredible. You know, the Model Y has been in production since January 2020. And four and a half years later, this, with all the latest technology, only just beats the Model Y. Also, the Model Y has one pedal driving mode. This doesn't. This, at low speed, will keep a constant crawling speed at roughly five or seven kilometers an hour. And I know that one pedal driving experience is so vital to a lot of Tesla owners. They love it. To be honest, I enjoy it as well. But let me explain why Chinese EVs in general don't have one pedal driving mode. It's because of regulation. Because in China, one pedal driving mode has been deemed unsafe. The theory is once you use the throttle pedal to control the speed for long enough time, at, in some emergency stop situations, even experienced drivers will go for the throttle pedal, will press the throttle pedal mistakenly because they've been using the throttle pedal to control the speed for so long and that's potentially dangerous. That's the theory. I disagree with it, but that is the regulation in China right now. In future, all electric vehicles in China has to turn the one pedal off, one pedal driving mode off by default and that is the reason why this Envo L60, despite having all the latest technology, doesn't have a one pedal driving mode. It's not because they can't do it, it's because the regulation doesn't allow one pedal driving mode to be turned on by default. So they don't put in enough resources to work on the gentle, that final bit of gentle braking, bring the car to a complete stop. This doesn't have that. So the Envo L60 is more efficient than the gold standard, has a nicer interior, bigger passenger space, and of course, battery swap. Now the competition has caught up. Let's see what Tesla can do with the Model Y facelift. That is all from the Telescope today. If you enjoyed this video, keep watching, keep subscribing. More videos coming along very soon.